Word up. So as you can see, ain't no cop in my rap. You know what I'm saying? I called it July the 4th. I predicted that, um, you know, Tash Crawford, you know what I mean, would end up overcoming over Spence, Errol Spence Jr. But if we're talking about um, legacy and purpose, I definitely see, and I'm leaning for, you know, um, Terrence Crawford and actually seeing him overcome Errol Spence and not only doing that, but going up to 154 fighting Charlo and beating him, which like I said, I honestly think he'll beat Charlo uh, easier than he would Spence. But if he takes out the hard work now, then everything else will fall in line. This was one of the you know, most important fights of his life. You know what I mean? This is what he needed, you know, being that he was once upon a time what I would consider black ball in um, boxing, you know what I mean? A lot of speculation by his people saying that he was too small, he didn't fight anybody, he fought cab drivers, not everybody, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Saying that, you know, Bud is, is, is damn near like God now, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I called it, you know what I mean? And I really just felt genuinely, you know what I mean, when he, you can, you know, some some of us just have that that IQ level where we can see and feel, you know, through our intuitiveness when somebody's genuinely dedicated to what they're saying and they meaning what they're saying. And just being a consumer of boxing, you know what I mean? I'm 34 years old. I've been watching it for some time. I done seen him come from the bottom, go to the top of the mountain and fall. You know what I mean? So, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of different careers take place. And just Bud, man, he, he was on it. So we're going to get into some of the breakdown of what I actually thought, you know what I mean, about the actual fight. The second round sealed the deal, if you ask me. Like, it was already in a bag for me. But some people would be like, well, I mean, it was just a knockdown, a flash KO. But I think the buildup of the fight, the narrative of the fight, um, keep, you got to keep in mind, Errol Smith's never been on his back pockets before, never been knocked down. That sh plays with a person's psyche. And this just adds to the sweet science of boxing. So... That was major. I don't know if Terrence Crawford aimed to do that, regardless of the fact he did it, and that put him major position. You know what I'm saying? To even just alone, if he would have won 12 rounds, that alone would have would have possibly got him a split decision or a unanimous decision, just based off of that being that we never seen Errol Spence on his back pockets. And to be honest, Terrence just put on a clinic from that point. By the fifth round, he should have threw the tie win. And to me, it kind of just seemed like it was the decision was kind of more ego driven you know, more than anything, because, you know, you got to keep in mind, this is boxing, you know, although we want to put on a good performance and a good show, but one punch, man, one punch could be the end of your career. As we see now, Earl Spence is, um, you know, it's rumored that he has some neurological damage going on with the brain, so definitely had Bud beating him, and I honestly seen a knockout coming from Bud just because of how much they was trying Bud, like Bud wasn't capable. But I didn't go out there and throw the knockout, my opinion on the knockout, because, you know, this. I didn't just want to sh on Errol Spence because I have a, a huge amount of respect for Errol Spence, and Errol Spence has proven himself, you know what I mean, in certain ways. Although I can go through his resume and dissect um, a lot of sh just like I can go through Buzz. But I didn't want to treat Errol Spence, you know what I mean, like he was, a, you know, some second-class fighter you know what i mean i wanted to be all the way and it's just one of them fights you just never know you know what i mean you just never know but all in all i think derrick james should have threw the through the towel in i think he was he was dead ass wrong for not throwing the towel in at least by the fifth round because then when we got to the seventh round man he dropped him twice he put him on his back pockets twice like crazy by by the fifth round i was already like god damn. like i wanted to see bud win for sure but Terrence Crawford was taking off his belt and spanking ass, you know what I'm saying? He was putting belt that ass shit didn't look good at all, man. Like, And being that we know what Earl Spence has overcome outside of the ring, and it just like, I thought he would have threw the uh, towel in by the, by the fifth round. But when we got to the seventh and, and Terrence dropped the ass twice, I knew it was over with. You know what I mean? I, really, to be honest, I think Bud let it go longer than what it, it should have went. You know what I'm saying? Um... And I think for many different reasons, but a couple of them was because he wanted to put on a show for the people. You know what I'm saying? Um, this is a huge fight. A lot of money got spent. He could have, you know, he. I, I think he took the, the May weather route, you know what I'm saying, and giving the people what they wanted to see. And also building notoriety to his name because, like I said, a lot of people, you know, are praising and giving Bud Crawford his, um, his appreciation now. But before, they was just on him. They was just saying that he was too little for Errol. You know what I'm saying? That he 
he was gonna get demolished pretty much. Now all of a sudden, this is believers. Everything worked in Terrence Crawford's favor. I think he put on a beautiful boxing performance. You know what I mean? I think that he put on a fucking clinic. He, you know what I mean? To be fair, he, you know, he, he beat the shit out of him. He dog. I know y'all think Bud gonna run through boots the same way he ran through Earl Spence. But y'all was just saying that he was too small and he wasn't equipped and didn't have enough for Earl Spence. I love Terrence Crawford. I stood on 10 and, and was ready to face the ridicule if he didn't beat Earl Spence. You know what I'm saying? Because I made a bold statement. I said that he was going to beat Earl Spence, then go up and fight Charlo. But since Charlo is actually fighting Canelo, then that looks like that's not going to be what's possible right now. But and to be honest, Canelo might be this, might be Charlo's before uh, Bud can get the chance to. Because I definitely, Bud wants to fight Charlo. That's why it mattered even more than the belts per se. Because he jumped out there and said that he wanted to fight Charlo. He was, he was dead serious like he wasn't bullsh about him beating charlo at all so i knew if he felt like he could beat charlo then he definitely had to see something in earl spence to take advantage of that but y'all will be a fool to think that bud is gonna walk through boots the same way that he did earl spence i promise you it's not gonna happen like i take nothing away from um from bud bud has a very high iq so does boots you know what I'm saying? Both of them have switch hitting abilities. You know what I mean? Bud has it, so does Boots. The only difference here is, is age, really, to be honest. And it could work to either side's favor. Being that Bud is older, he has the experience and the knowledge. You can never treat the experience and knowledge like it's, um, you know, something that you should disregard. And then on Boots' end, he has, you know, the youth. The youth and the skill set. And he can make up for the knowledge and experience because he has his father in this corner and bro is really a gym rat both of these guys are both gym rats they both be in the gym logged in with um you know what's going on so we're gonna see though we're gonna see Shots to the body by Whitaker. 